It's Monday and you're watching Freight Waves now. I'm your host Anthony Smith and coming up Luke Flaska is going to give us a broker update. We also have Mike Bottonistel here with us with a rail intermodal update. But first we're going to go to Zach Strickland with the carry update brought to you by Powerfleet. Stay tuned. everyone and welcome to your Monday Carrier Update presented by Powerfleet. I'm Zach Strickland and hopefully everybody had a good Easter weekend and took some time to keep your hands washed and everything like that. Uh, the freight volumes however did take a day off on Friday and they continue to drop uh, down below that 9,000 level uh, all the way to 88.57 over the last couple of days. You can see well under uh, year over year volumes. Now Something you need to take into account is that Easter was on April 19th last year, uh, or the Good Friday, I should say, was a lot later last year. We still got a week to go before we hit that point year over year, but uh, so we didn't necessarily see a, a true year to year comparison right here, but we're still well below last year. This is still quite anomalous as we drop below, continue to drop below. Uh, what we would expect to see this time of year. 88, of course, looks more like a holiday number uh, around Christmas and, and, and Thanksgiving uh, versus this time in April. So volumes did take a pretty big hit on, uh, on Friday. We did see about a, a pretty significant uh, drop in terms of daily volume uh, on that day. So it is going to accelerate it through the rest of the week here as we do have the seven day moving average to work through. So uh, again, we do expect that they should recover a little bit how much we're not really sure yet time will tell uh, but yeah volumes not looking great right now so what does that do to capacity outbound tender rejection index down around 5.82 percent it actually leveled out a little bit over the last couple of days again when you see holidays occur capacity starts to react to that as well because the supply of trucks does contract a little bit so tender rejection rates did not follow the same path as the volumes uh, and actually leveled out slightly just under six percent there 5.82 percent uh, year over year we're actually doing a little bit better in terms of capacity uh, tightness uh, not a lot though we could we probably will continue to see this number drop throughout the week as well looking at the nation so this is the weighted rejection index we have just revamped this map to show you that everything now at zero right around zero is going to be in the white anything with a positive value is going to be in a shade of blue anything in a negative value is going to be in a shade of red so that should make things a little bit easier to follow here uh, so you can see some of these markets not a lot of not a lot of dark blue on this map uh, right now. A lot of light blue, and you know, in the mountains down here around El Paso and around the Gulf Coast region, New Orleans, for instance. Uh, weighted rejection levels, of course, measuring the weekly change in rejection rate combined with tender market share. Uh, so it does give a little bit more value to markets that have a lot more volume uh, versus the ones with low volume. So Bismarck, North Dakota, doesn't get a lot of credit for that one percent tender rejection change. Atlanta, however gets a lot of credit for that 10% tender rejection drop. But you can see Atlanta here in the dark red indicating that there is a significant decline in rejection rate along with, uh, you know, potentially volume. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Columbus, Ohio, all showing significant loosening uh, week over week in terms of rejection rates. You can look at the, uh, the list here. El Paso tops the list at 3.7. Uh, pretty low value for a high uh, in terms of what we're looking at overall in the market. Uh, you normally, we were seeing about 20 to 30 here over, over the last month or so, and now we're all the way back down here. The lowest value today is Atlanta at negative 30. So let's look at our high value, uh, the weighted rejection. Looking at volumes in the orange line right here, we can see this is a kind of a heartbeat rhythm. Volumes are kind of trending a little higher here over the last little bit uh, in response to you know, the COVID outbreak, but not significantly so. Tender rejection rates, however, spiking here over the last several days to 19.9% from about 8% this time last week. So that's what's creating the, the significant uh, blue value, I should say, on that map that you saw earlier. Looking at Atlanta, for instance. So Atlanta, we can see volumes and tender rejection rates both on the downward swing. Uh, not a lot of increases anywhere on the map here. All lengths of haul showing drops in volume. Uh, strong decrease tender rejection rate, strong decrease in outbound rejection volatility. So again, Atlanta, the nation's largest market in a free fall right now. Uh, any carrier operating over there should definitely watch out for low volumes in that market. And that'll do it for today's carrier update. 
The comprehensive logistics offerings from PowerFleet cover in-cab ELD, fleet management, trailer tracking, cargo monitoring, and tracking other assets such as chassis and intermodal containers. Power up your operations with PowerFleet. Hi, good morning everyone. I'm Luke Falaska bringing you another broker update. And uh, there's been, there were actually some pretty pretty heavy storms here in the southeast. We actually had some here in, in Chattanooga yesterday. I think Alabama, Mississippi, some parts of South Carolina got hit pretty hard as well. So hopefully everybody is staying safe during that time. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look here at the volume level. So volume levels continue to drop. We've actually seen if this blue line here is volume, see that 8857 number there on the bottom right corner of your screen. Volume levels are at their all time low apart from typical holiday dips. So we've never actually seen uh, volume levels go this low apart from like holiday seasons like your Christmas, New Year's, 4th of July. Generally speaking, they don't go this low. This is typically where you will see a, uh, you know, like a, a Labor Day holiday volume levels. So uh, that's very, very low. Now, just because it's going there will still be opportunities. We'll take a look at that. Um, also, the orange line here is the rejection level. If you notice, sitting at about 5.8%. That's where we were pretty, that's where we typically hung out um, for most of the year. Usually in that four and a half to 6% range is where national average numbers for tender rejections typically sit. So we're pretty much at normal rejection levels right now. We'll see if it continues to drop even below that. Um, next year, just to give you an idea, as to how much rejections have changed. What we've got here in blue is the dry van tender rejections, and in green we have the reefer tender rejections. So notice over here on the top left corner of the screen, this is pretty much where the, the peak was for rejections, right around March 27th. So since that peak, not three weeks ago, we've seen a 61% decrease in reefer tender rejections and a 71% decrease in dry van tender rejections. So a massive, massive decrease, and it didn't take long at all. Uh, uh, again, you know, you're talking pretty much from the 27th to the 12th, so just over two weeks, a very short period of time for such, such significant uh, dips and tender rejections. If you're a broker, this right here, you're going to really need to push carrier rates down in order to create margins, uh, especially on the spot market. So continue to push those rates down as they fall in order to create margins. That's, that's pretty much gonna be your best bet. Now, as far as finding opportunities right now, um, the red and white areas of this map are going to be where dry van volumes have, are decreasing on the seven day period. So this is over the last seven days. A uh, lot of red, a lot of white on the map, but there's still a little bit of blue. Blue is where we're going to see increases. So you see down there on the bottom right, Tallahassee's actually seen about a 45% increase in dry van volumes, so pretty significant. Might be a great place to call if you don't have customers to see if you can find some loads from some shippers there. If you do have shippers there, go ahead and get them on the phone and see if they have uh, any capacity needs that you can fill. A little bit here in the middle of the country in the mountain regions, while there's not typically a lot of loads there, if you do happen to have a customer in those areas, you might get away with getting a little bit more freight today. Um, uh, Nevada's also seen some increases. El Paso has been very consistent. We've seen increases in volume levels. They're up about 15% over the last seven days. So if you don't have a customer in El Paso, great place to call to try to find some opportunities. I'd focus there. Um, otherwise, you've got Alexandria has seen some increases as well as a little bit uh, south of Minneapolis. So you might want to focus on some of those places. Uh, the market we're going to look at today is Savannah. What we have here is in blue, you have the dry van tender rejections since the beginning of February. And then in green, you have reefer tender rejections. So notice these massive surges. Reefer actually went from about, uh, from around the, uh, the 10th or so of March, it went from about 8% and surged all the way up to almost 70% tender rejections. That's absolutely insane. We've never seen a surge quite like that in this small a period of time. And then we pretty much beginning on, at the right beginning of April, we fell from about 65% all the way down to around 20%, so a massive fall. This right here is where you need to cut your uh, spot market rates to create margins. But as you can see, they're still falling, so be sure to lower rates in both of these markets. I'm Luke, and that'll do it for today's broker update. Voices from every corner of the supply chain concerning all modes of transportation. From the world's largest logistics podcast network, this is what the freight tech revolution sounds like. Freightcast presented by Freightways. Subscribe now wherever you get your podcasts.
Welcome to your rail intermodal update. I'm here with Mike Bobbinistel. Mike, what's the latest? So the latest is, uh, you know, intermodal has been is, is down about 15% in the last couple of weeks. It was down 15%, and uh, you know, the last week before that was down 14%. Now this chart shows intermodal spot rates. Um, now intermodal is mostly on contract rates, but you know we get visibility into the spot rates, which is maybe 20% of, of total intermodal. Um, you know, sort of a mixed bag here. But really, where I want to direct your attention is the, some of these larger lanes, which is sort of in the middle part of the screen. You see LA to Chicago up 1.1%, still. Up from a low level, a dollar sixteen per mile. This goes into that in a little bit more detail, and you see this is, uh, you know, LA to Chicago, of course, the largest intermodal lane in the country. Um, you know, travels primarily on, you know, on the Burlington Northern, but also on, on Union Pacific uh, as as well. And you see just really, a, you know, dollar sixteen a mile uh, in that lane. That's really not competitive with with trucks. So that's really sort of a almost a dedicated intermodal lane at this point. And you know, part of the the, the reason why there's excess capacity in that lane is. Is, you know, import volumes are down. Um, you know, at you know most of the ports are just across the country, and you know LA sort of in particular. And what you see with the the haul index is the in LA haul index becoming much less of an outbound um, outbound location where you know you see in the left part of the screen you know 125 in our index uh, that's taking the outbound subtracting the, the inbound now it's it's down to to 43 so much more much more balanced and uh, it's important for you know truckers to, to, to realize that you know they're, they're used to having you know so much freight coming out of those markets it's it's a little going to be more competitive you know at, at these times when you go into those markets coming coming back out um, the other thing people are are concerned about is you know you were, uh, Jack, Zach just mentioned just lower you know volumes coming out of Atlanta um, and, and also I think that, you know with some of the near the port cities the the situation is is there going to be enough demand from the consumer um, you know once those uh, imports come into the ports or are they going to be stuck you know near the ports and warehousing facilities like Ontario uh, California right. So this chart just shows a little bit more in detail on, on that and, and really just shows sort of the, the, in orange the 40-foot loaded containers out of LA. So this is going to be one of the, the series that's most tied to imports. Um, you know, we've seen uh, much more volatility in the, the um, 40 foot rather than the 53 foot. So international intermodal has been more influenced by sort of the volatility in you know Chinese manufacturing shutting down and then ramping back up again. And you see almost a perfect correlation between uh, what's, uh, you know, exports to the U.S. from the port of the port of Shanghai uh, tend to think of that as being a leading indicator of what's going on the rails. So you are seeing some improvement there, not fully, you know, up, up and running, not fully, you know, going full blast, but still, you know, seeing improvement there, which is, is likely to, to continue. I think the bigger question is, is there going to be pull through from the consumer? A lot of what goes on intermodal is things like clothes, Thing, which you can buy if you wanted to right, with, with stores being shut down and things. Got you. And so with this increase, as you said, it's not, it's, it's rising, right, these, these imports, but mm -hmm. not quite enough to put, give upward pressure for intermodal rates just yet. Yeah, I mean, intermodal rates really seem pretty pretty depressed, at least on in, in the lanes like I was talking about between L.A. And, and Chicago. L.A. to Dallas, it's a little bit of a different issue. I mean, that one is um, you know, a little bit more competitive. That would be on the highway, like a three-day uh, you know, truck route rather than a four-day truck route. And, you know, that was a lane that was just more competitive throughout last year. So uh, when we were talking about the L.A. to Chicago being down in the 110 to 115 a mile range, that L.A. to, Ch LA to, to Dallas was was, was more like a dollar fifty-two on the spot rate, so that one's going to be much more, much more competitive. Um, but for the most part, I mean, there's there's plenty of uh, capacity on on the railroad, you know, capacity for containers. Really, the only container shortage that we've seen has been on, um, you know, the the forty foot back to the port for exporters, which some of the exporters that will, will export, um, say, grain and, and bags within the containers are finding some difficulty, um, you know, finding the 40-foot containers. Excellent. Mike, thank you so much. Insightful, as always. And thank you so much for tuning in. That's going to do for this Monday edition of Freight Waves Now, but the content doesn't stop here. We're always streaming around the clock, so check out our Freight Waves TV app on all your favorite streaming platforms, including Apple TV. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode.